Hi, my name is Suzanne Rivera, and I'm the Associate Vice President for Research at Case Western Reserve University in Cleveland, Ohio. I'm going to be talking to you today about the importance of good communication in your research enterprise. Every university is organized differently. Some have comprehensive offices of research administration that include pre-award, post-award, compliance, technology, tech transfer, um, but not all are organized that way. There are lots of places where post-award reports up through a controller or a VP for finance, and perhaps the compliance committees report through the Office of General Counsel. So everyone who's part of the research enterprise may not all report up through the Vice President for Research or the Vice Chancellor for Research. And given these different organizational models, it's really important that everyone who's a part of doing research or making research happen on your campus communicates effectively with one another. But it can be really challenging to have that degree of communication that's necessary when the various parts of the enterprise report up different chains of command. For example, let's imagine a situation where the IACUC discovers non-compliance and decides to suspend approval of an annual use protocol. Well, it'd be really important for someone in the IACUC office or on the IACUC staff to communicate with the post award personnel to make sure that no animal-related charges like per diem charges hit a grant account during a period of protocol suspension. So it's really important that the people in the ICUC office know who the people in the post award office are that they should be talking to when something like that happens. Another example of really important crosstalk would be if a clinical trial uh, agreement were to expire or be terminated, but an IRB approved protocol hasn't yet been closed. Then the contract staff or the people who manage the contract really need to talk with the IRB staff to address whether the protocol should be closed or whether there will be some other source of funds to which all of the related human subject expenses could be charged after the contract is closed or is terminated. And there are many other examples of essential communication across reporting lines. For example, the Biosafety Committee may or may not live in the Office of Environmental Health and Safety. If it doesn't live there, then it's really important for the people on the Biosafety Committee to know the people on the EHS staff or the IACUC may not operate the occupational health program. That could live in student health or in human resources or some other office on campus. So the bottom line for all of this is that it's really important if you're part of the research enterprise to understand all the other people and all the other offices that are involved, whether or not they report to the same boss as you, figure out who your key counterparts are in those offices, get to know them so that you can feel comfortable picking up the phone and talking with them when an issue arises that requires cooperation among more than one office or group in order to resolve the problem.